My name's Callum and I'm one of the experts from Bluehub and we're currently the number one implementation partner worldwide for DIA systems. Um, you can come and check out our page on the DIA Find an Expert page by clicking Find Experts and you'll see us at the top under Bluehub. You can click into there, click Contact and you can get in touch if you need any further help. In today's specific video, we're going to be looking at the top reporting tips for DIA systems. So we often get asked by a lot of our clients how it's best to use reports, which reports are best, and also if there's any tips that we have for using reporting. So I've configured um, a couple of tips that I've picked up throughout my years working with DIA, and I'm going to take you through those today. Okay, so the first tip that I'm going to show you is by using the automation module. Now we do, we do have a specific video on this and how you can use this, but it often gets overlooked. So if you click into settings, automation, you'll see that there is a section called report scheduling. And in here, you can configure conditions to get yourself a report sent on a um, certain frequency such as weekly, monthly, or even quarterly. And you can configure all those conditions yourself. All you need to do is click the plus button here. You can select enabled. You can give this report a name like weekly sales report. You can then choose the report that you wish to schedule. So for example, it might, I might want to have the sales overview report. You can then select a layout. So this is the default layout that you have saved and I'll show you how to create one of those in this video too. You'll then say which period you want to report on. So this year, for example, or maybe this quarter, if I'm going to have this as a quarterly report, and you can schedule this from a certain date. So I'm going to have this from the end of this month. I'm going to tell Dia to run it at 9am. And I want this quarterly. And then you can select your mailing list of who wants to receive this report. And then you can also say which format you want this report in. Okay. And then you can select save. And now um, I've already got that report. So let's just change it. I'm going to put V2. And I can click save. And now I'm going to get this report every quarter of all the information I need. If you're not 100% sure on some of the things that we've just seen there, please refer to some of our other videos on the automation module where I'll walk you through on how to set up everything we've just been through there. Okay. So now let's take a look at some specific reporting tips. So if we come into the reporting module and just select a particular report, for instance, in here, sales order details, we can start to look through some of the um, tips that I've got. So first of all, as you would have just seen in that video, in that um, run through of the automation module there, you'll see that I selected a layout. Now this is the first tip and that is creating a layout for what you want to see each time you come into a report or you might have different layouts depending on what information you're trying to seek at that time. So first of all, you want to set up your report exactly how you want to see it. So for example, I'm going to pull over my fields that I want to see. So I want to see customer reference, sales representative. I'm also going to pull over order number and customer. And now I'm actually going to take that out. Now I'm able to see the order number by the customer, by the sales rep, how, how much to say I was for and what the quantity was for. And that's exactly as I want to see it. Once you're happy with that, you'll want to click Save Layout As. And you can name your report and select Save. Once you've done that, each time you come into this report, you'll be able to just select from the drop down your default layout and you'll always view those fields every single time. You can use those for different users. Different people might want to see different things. So layouts are a really good way um, to easily access the information that you want to see. The next tip we have is by um, clicking this button here, configure layout. Now, often you'll, you'll be stuck in a report and trying to find the information that you want to see and you'll think, oh, I wish it just showed me that additional attribute, for example. Well, if you click configure layout here and under hidden fields, you'll be able to view all the hidden fields that aren't natively available or natively visible in this particular report. And you can simply just scroll down 
and find the, the field that you want. Not every field is available in here, so that's worth bearing in mind, but there's just some that you can pull over. And let's just say we might want to view um, postcode. So we can literally click postcode, drag it down to the filter area, click update, and you'll now see we have postcode available and we can drag that over like so. Nice and easy. And you can do that for any other fields that you want to view. So a really good tip to have. Secondly, um, we're now we'll want to take a look at custom filter here. Now this one scares a lot of people off because everyone's not 100% sure how to use it, but it's a really good way to break down your reporting. So if I click custom filter here, it'll then be presented with a pivot grid pre-filter. And it's basically configuring if and and statements to view specific information in that report. So I can start off by selecting and, and I can choose my first condition. So is it and, or, not and, not or, or add group or a condition, okay? So I, let's just say I click add condition and then I can select my information. So I want to see in my report only sales. So I've selected country in my first condition and these are all the fields you can you can select. Begins with, I'm going to say contains. So you've got lots of options there like is less than, begins with, is not like, is like. And then I'm just going to put United Kingdom. So now I've really filtered my report down to only show me countries, um, sales which are in the country of United Kingdom. And once I click OK, the is then going to add that filter to the bottom and I can easily select it or unselect it like so. And then it's going to filter that report down for me. And you can as add as many as you like in there. You can click back in. You can have multiple filters by clicking the plus button here and you can add whatever you like. So if we add one more and then we say, uh, da, 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 let's see. Category. Oh, sorry. Let's go with. Let's just go location and then contains main warehouse. OK. And there we go. That's now added that filter in there. So really nice and easy. And it's a great way to find more information that you're not able to get out of your report. OK. Next tip that we can look at is um, attributes and tags. OK, so attributes and tags are set up against your product. So if we head into a product like so and we just choose any product in here. Now, once we're in our product, we're now able to see in the bottom right hand corner, we have a field called tags. Now, tags are a really useful way to break down your reporting. So we could just type in here, blue, enter, yellow, green. Tags are a really useful way and a use, really useful thing to add to your products because you can break those down in reports and filter by them. In addition to that, we can also use additional attribute sets, which we can assign in here. And these also allow us to break down our reporting. So we can add some additional attributes and additional attributes are literally just custom fields that we can add to the system. Once we've added our additional attributes and tags, in certain reports, you'll then be able to view those additional attributes in tags. So if we go back to our configure layout and we look in the hidden field section, you'll see that we have customer tags right there. So tags against customers even, not just products. We then have product additional attribute, which we've just created. So we can pull that over. And then we should also have product tags as well, product tags. So we can drag that over as well and then select update. We can then pull over those product tags.
an additional attribute and you're now able to see all the tags and additional attributes you have against those products and or customers. And what you can also do is click this little funnel here and select all of those tags and filter them down and break them down so you can see more information on them. So a really useful way, again, to break down the reporting information that you're seeing and have it more accurate and to the information that you want to see. The final tip that we're going to look at today is this page here. Now, we will include this in the description, but you can also pause the video and copy this at the top or you can follow this pa this pa these pages here to find this page. So another common question that we get asked is, how do, I, how do I know what report has what information? Or a client may ask us, can we see invoice number in that report? And it's, you can spend a lot of time going through every single report trying to find the information you want to see. This, report, this uh, page here shows you which report you need for the information you want to see. So, and it breaks it down into sales, inventory, financial, audit, and production reports. So you can simply come to this page you can either use the search box here or you can you can use control F, which I do, and you can literally just type in control F and product tag. And now I can see product tags has yes on all of these reports. So I can see product tags is available on the first four. So I can see product tags is available on these four reports. Really quick and easy. I can then jump to that report and get the information I want to see. Another example is batch and serial number. Type in batch and serial number using control F. Find batch and serial number on the table. So it's on the first and the last two on this particular report. So I can see we can see that on product availability, inventory aging and lot expiry within the inventory reporting section. If I scroll down to the um, production reporting section this should be now. Yep, batch and serial number, I can see it's on these three reports. So I can see it on inventory movement summary, production cost analysis, and disassembly analysis. So really quick and easy way to find exactly what you need. So hopefully these tips were helpful for you and you can um, utilize them in your use of DS systems. Like I said at the start of the video, if you have any questions or you feel like you need any further help, please do get in touch via our website or via the Dear Find an Expert page. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to see some more videos just like this. Thank you for watching.